What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is going to be five unshakable habits I've picked up living in America by Lost in the Pond, who else? Absolute legend, Lawrence Brown. Link will be in the description to go and check his channel out. It's absolutely awesome, guys. Now, firstly, I just want to say I apologize for not uh, uploading the past three days. I believe today is Saturday and I will actually be in England. Um, it's actually Friday for me. I'm going to try and record as many as I can tonight for you guys uh, for the week because I'm in England seeing family for a week. Um, so yeah, there may be a couple more days coming next week where there's no upload or maybe one a day or something like that. I'm going to try and get as many done as possible, but I'm running out of time. And I'm only just starting to feel a bit better. Um, I will be drinking a lot of water because my cough fully hasn't gone. Don't worry for people saying it, it wasn't COVID. Um, but yeah, just wanted to update you guys and tell you videos will be coming. And thank you for all the kind messages. Now let's get straight into the five unshakable habits. Lawrence has picked up living in America. It's going to be interesting because... One, I want to see if I do these anyway to see if I've got some natural habits and uh, and see if it is potentially a British thing as well. Or if I'm absolutely amazed, like, how is that a thing? So I'm not really too sure what to expect from this. Hit that like button. I would seriously appreciate that, guys. Absolute legends. Like I said, I'm going to try and get as many videos as possible this week. And then the week after, you're going to be flooded with videos. I've missed doing videos every single day, guys. So you're going to be absolutely flooded. So hit that like button, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. I'd really appreciate that. And let's kind of get straight into it, even though it's been probably a couple minutes. But let's get straight into it, guys. Five unshakable habits that Lawrence has picked up since living in America. Tomatoes. 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 <laughs> I was, I was going to yep. say tomato. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And yep. one of those memos pertains to habits. Specifically, habits that I've picked up since moving to America. Let's and just to clear it. up any confusion, this is not a video about how I ran away to a convent and became a nun. <laughs> That's a separate video. No, <laughs> this is a video about little things that I do habitually every day yep. that I didn't do when I lived in Britain. And because a long-standing habit of Uncle Toby is to hammer away on his keyboard right after my videos, I want to preempt him by insisting that this video does not include habits like leaving socks around the house, because quite frankly, I've done that my entire yep, life. Yeah, same. <laughs> Plus, that... Yeah, the girlfriend's not a fan of that, but I definitely do. Accidentally. I think everyone does, you know? It's just sometimes you're tired, you just do it. <laughs> it's universal, and I know that because men do it throughout the entire universe. Yep. The entries in this video were heavily inspired by American culture. And okay. so with that in mind, here are five unshakable habits I picked up after moving to America. What we got? Morning coffee. I'm gonna let you in on a little okay. secret. When I lived in Britain, I never once drunk a cup of coffee. Wow. Except for when I was one and a half years old and that was <laughs> bad for everybody, especially my parents. Now, I don't want to get carried away and suggest that we don't have coffee in Britain. We do. It's just that when I lived there, there were two factors at play. It's surely going to say that tea was the most drunk because I have a tea every single morning. Every so often, if I've had a, a late night, I haven't been able to sleep and I need, I need something to wake me up, I'll have a black coffee. Not because I enjoy it per se. I do. It's okay. It's, it's not amazing. It's not horrible. But every other morning, I'd pick a tea, 100%. But I do know people in my work who have a coffee every morning because that is what they like. It one, to wake them up because they need that extra bit of caffeine. I know tea does have caffeine in it, but obviously coffee has a lot more. Um, but tea, widely drunk a lot more. But those people who drink uh, coffee. And I get that US connection because you guys hardly drink tea. Um, so I completely get that. Number one, tea was more popular. Tea, and number yeah. two, per capita, Americans drink way more coffee than the British. It should be yeah. noted, of course, that the United States is by no means top of worldwide coffee consumption. After all, people in Nordic countries drink three times as much, which frankly is absurd. Is Nonetheless, that, even though coffee consumption has actually increased in Britain since I left, presumably because people need it as a coping mechanism, <laughs> coffee is still more prevalent in the United States. I can imagine, And yeah. I really started drinking coffee because all of my work colleagues were doing it, and I didn't want to feel left out. Before I knew it, I couldn't stop. And that might sound to you like an addiction as opposed to a habit, but here's where the habitual nature of coffee drinking comes in. I've made it a habit to drink coffee as soon as I wake up. 
And I okay, need that just play. to compete with my cat because when I wake up at 5 a.m., usually in zombie-like fashion, I'm always struck by how he's up and about like it's nothing. <laughs> Here I am accidentally pouring coffee into my cereal and he's already had breakfast, cleaned himself three times and fought off an imaginary mouse. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have that problem because I wake up last minute, hop in the shower, straight out the door. It takes me about 10 minutes to get ready, straight out the door and then have a croissant at work, I guess, or maybe nothing, and have my cup of tea at work. I don't have any of them problems. I don't get up at 5 a.m. I get up at 7 a.m., <laughs> like last minute, and I'll start at 8, and it's a half an hour journey. So I've got to be very quick getting ready. I don't have any of them problems. But coffee isn't the only thing I picked up in the workplace. Oh, but jog, like any other what? country in the world, America has languages within languages, and one of those languages is corporate speak. And arguably, no country on earth is more fluent in this language than the United States itself. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Looks like I accidentally muted myself. What I was saying <laughs> is, can you hear me? What I was saying is, I got another email today from Martin saying, we need to touch base about those SOWs. And I still don't know what an SOW is. <laughs> to, to me, an SOW is a female pig. And as somebody who worked in American office environments for the better part of seven years, I've picked up this lingo through osmosis. So you'll hear these phrases that you'll never hear outside of the office environment, such as, can we circle back? Let's touch base. Can we okay. get our ducks in a row? You know, <laughs> unless you work for a veterinary service or the parks department, you're not going to be doing anything with ducks, much less getting them in a row. I no, I definitely wear that. I, I get where it's coming from. I was a little bit confused at first. That makes sense. I think it's just office lingo, isn't it? I'd say lingo, not jargon. Um, yeah, no, that does make sense. I know this is just an idiom, but at the end of the day, ducks are just going to do their own thing. So it's better for your productivity if you leave them alone. <laughs> Same goes for CBT, because I know now that it stands for computer-based training, but previously it meant cognitive behavioral therapy. <laughs> so we just need to spell things out. Yep, it helps, definitely. To those of you who've never lived... This is something we've had. We had it in another video, and I was quite surprised that... I, I don't know if it was a loss of a pond video, it may have been, or it may have been a general one, I can't really remember off the top of my head, but I seen, I even get comments to this day on it, um, not in a mean way, just people saying, yeah, like if you're in New York City, somewhere like that, or a city like that, you don't want to let your cat out, because traffic's everywhere, people's everywhere, it's very dangerous. In the UK, very lucky, we can let our cats out in certain places, it's not dangerous for them, they come back, they've got their own land, and uh, I completely agree with you. I didn't really think about that, and I do apologize. And I imagine that's what you're going to say. It's a lot more dangerous in the US to let your cats outside than it is in the UK. With a cat, I feel both deeply sorry and envious. But if that is you, there's probably one thing you don't know about indoor cats. They're constantly trying to escape. Why do you always do this when I have to go down and get the mail? <laughs> get off my hand. He's trying to turn my hand so that the hand turns the doorknob. He's, he's so smart. In America, they're much less likely to be successful because on the whole, Americans prefer to keep their cats indoors. Yep. In Britain, sometimes it feels like there are more cats on the street than dog feces. All that to say, <laughs> when I moved to the United States, I thought nothing of letting the cat out of the flap. I wouldn't either, I saw to be something honest. weird. I watched as a cat got run over by oh, a man. truck and it just happened that behind that truck was a police officer and he stopped his car, got out of it, saw me and my wife frozen in horror like this and he just picked the cat up by the tail and dumped it by the side of the road. And in that moment, I had an epiphany. If one of my cats got flattened by a truck, I wouldn't want them to have such a demeaning burial. I mean... Or to be flattened yeah. by a truck. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say that, or just to be flattened. <laughs> I mean, let's be clear. And so now, every time I leave the house, I have to make sure the cats aren't following me. Yeah. They're indoor cats. They're not going anywhere. They're staying that makes put. Sense. There's actually just the one cat these days. <laughs> the other one... Oh, that's, that's sad, man. I'll probably hit him as well. I, I hope he's okay. I didn't mean to laugh at that, man. That's sad. That is very sad. Side of kidney failure. Oh, man. Not a Prius. Oh, man. He'll be kidnapped that's awful. by cyclists. Do you want that? Oh, he's, he's got out. He got out. I, I didn't mean for that. Um, come he back in. He definitely didn't get out. <laughs> 
direct communication. When I lived in Britain, I had a habit of forming communication with other people in a way that didn't put them out. So I'd go out of my way to say things in a manner that couldn't be perceived as confrontational. Tagging statements with questions like, would you mind if I, or would it be possible to? That's and what after I do. years of living in America, I've learned to get straight to the point, my videos notwithstanding. Hello, yes, I'd like to order a delivery, please. I'd like a six inch on Italian bread, teriyaki chicken with American cheese toasted. Well, my, I mean, my wife gave me the number. I, <laughs> is it? Right, okay, well, I'll, I'll let her know. Thank you, sorry about that, yep. Bye. Yep. That was the Chicago Public Library. <laughs> and it doesn't mean I've become rude or anything like that, because the Americans that I speak to in this manner speak to me in the same manner. Yep. And also, Makes sense. being direct doesn't mean you shouldn't use phrases like please, or thank you, or bless your little cotton socks. It just means getting straight to the point. No, that's fine. And then can I just add green peppers, onion? Yes, there you go. That, I, I, that's what I was thinking in my head, how I order a takeaway. Like, oh, could I just have this? Could I just have that? Would it be all right if you had extra salt onto your chips? Something like that. Instead of just, uh, yeah, can I have... Uh, not, I did it again, kind of. Uh, it was like, I'd like to have that and stuff like that. Again, very, it doesn't really make a difference in that scenario. Um, but it's an example. And there's probably a lot more scenarios where you don't actually get your desired outcome because you've asked the question instead of directed. It makes sense, definitely. And tomatoes, and that's it. Tomatoes. Tomato. <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> I get it now. It's on the takeaway. Tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> yep. And while we're on the subject of placing orders, that brings us on directly to our final entry. Tip in. To okay. Americans. Tipping might seem like an odd entry to have on a list of habits, but for me, it had to become a habit because growing up in Britain, you're not expected to tip the bar staff or the waiter. In yep. America, because those workers rely on those tips for income, it is inconceivably rude not to tip. And how do I know that? Because I accidentally did that once. I was on a business trip in Westminster, Colorado, and I decided to stay up late one night and just have a couple of drinks at the bar. I struck up a conversation with the barman who had an interest in British culture, perhaps okay. owing to the fact that Westminster, Colorado shares its name with Westminster, London, but that's not important yep. right now. <laughs> What's important is we stayed up for about two hours talking until I was the last customer in the bar. He went into the back to do whatever bar staff do in the back, and I took that as my cue to leave. And as I was on the flight back to Indianapolis the next day, it hit me. I never tipped him. And I still feel really bad about oh, that. Oh, man. So I bet if you're I, watching... I bet that bartender's good. I mean, I, I imagine he's happy he's had a fantastic conversation. But come on, Lawrence, man. You're meant to be showing the British in a good light. <laughs> Barman from the Doubletree in Westminster, Colorado. This video is dedicated to you. <laughs> no, you've been great. So one last thing. When I put a tip on the receipt... Does that go to the delivery person or does that go to you? Goes to the delivery person. So if, could I send you a check? <laughs> you personally for say, you know, 20% of this. Cause well, it's people think that I'm some sort of YouTube sensation, right? It's not, not my words. And I don't want to be seen to lack generosity. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it, you've got to put back a little bit, you know, and I just feel it's the least I could do because you've been excellent. One habit that I'm really proud of is being thankful to my patrons who make these videos possible. That is the end of the video. If you want to check out the patrons who make it possible, go and check them out. Awesome channel. I advocate you guys to go over to the channel. The link will be in the description. Sign up to his Patreon if you want as well. He's an absolute legend. And if you are just throwing money about, there is a join on the, uh, a membership join on the channel where you get to use emojis of my face in the comments. It'll be next to your name. Why not? Uh, but if you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. Um, on that tipping one, we've been over it so many times. Um, very foreign to me to be not forced to do it, but to be expected. But I absolutely love to tip. Anyway, wherever you go, I think it's just polite. And obviously in America, it's even more for the waitresses and waiters and stuff like that. Uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, bear with me this week. Like I said, not too many videos, uh, but I'll try and get as many done tonight as possible. Have a fantastic day, guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.